So I've been studying Velo for about four months now, and I finally feel comfortable enough to explain to you exactly what this token is. Is it a meme coin, or are we actually looking at a hidden gem that also runs on the XLM blockchain? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Wade. You're watching DHGen. We're doing a review, a rundown of the Velo token. This is a very popular low cap gem that a lot of people have been talking about recently, especially since we've had the instant payment system go live in the US, talking about FedNow, which launched in July. Payment tokens, especially cross-border payments, are going to be very crucial in the next stage of this crypto uh, cycle here. Now, what Velo focuses on, and again, I spent four months really looking into this, letting things develop, kind of watching the project to see what they do to get a good definition of what really is the value proposition here. Velo, and we're gonna jump right over to their documentation. And we're gonna start here. The Velo protocol allows trusted partners to issue and manage digital credits used for financial services. That sentence is highlighted and I love how they started this paragraph because that gets directly to the point. The key thing to understand, if you're going to get involved with Velo and you want to know where the value is going to come from, it's digital credits. And I had to do a little digging to get a deeper understanding on that. And apparently it's all related to online credit services, lending, borrowing, things like that. What Velo wants to do, and this is just a report from uh, the University of Washington that discusses how digital credit is an emerging market. This is really what I spent a lot of time digging into because you have to understand the use case to understand why you're investing in the project. I discovered that digital credit in the last few years, and there's a couple more stories here, uh, going back especially this decade, as we've had a rush of fintech companies come into the uh, ecosystem, digital credit products have been on the rise, right? And according to, and then this is another PDF I was reading here, the potential of digital credit to bank the poor, it really gets deep, guys. But this McKinsey report really summarized everything that we really need to pay attention to. Faster credit decisions, vastly improved customer experience, 40% lower cost, and more secure risk profile. This is, in essence, the focus of the Velo token. They're looking to take this market, this digital credit market, and put it on the blockchain. Coin Market Cap has a simpler definition for us as well. The project's core mission is to enable partners to safely and secure transfer value between each other in a timely and transparent way. To do this, the Velo protocol enables its partners to issue digital credits via a smart contract layer using the Stellar Consensus Protocol to process and settle transactions. So not only are we bringing value to the Velo token, this is also going to bring value to the Stellar Lumens blockchain. And let me show you this because as they say, the proof is in the pudding. Now, you'll learn that this asset is both on BSC and Stellar, but I wanted to show you the statistics for Stellar. You see, we're dealing with digital credit issuance here, right? Another term for that is trust lines. If you're in the XRP army, you may be familiar with that. Ripple offers that as well. But you can see here, their trust lines are moving and they're active out of the seven nearly 8,000 in total, half of them, more than 50%, have been funded already. So that's showing activity, right? And you can find this on Stellar.expert. This is where you can find information uh, on Stellar assets that are, you know, running on the Stellar Lumens blockchain, right? Supply and accounts here, a steady increase over the last couple of years, guys. Steady increase. So, there's a lot of activity happening with Velo. Let's go back over to the documentation just to learn a little bit more on the relationship between Velo and the Stellar chain. Velo tokens, as well as all digital credits are issued on the Stellar blockchain network. All settlements for these assets occur on Stellar as well. Again, bringing value to both chains. 
Future releases intend to support additional collateralization, collateral, ugh, additional options. So they're talking about, excuse me, expanding this capability to other chains. Velo tokens and digital credits are ordinary stellar assets subject to all the rules and semantics of all stellar assets. Stellar's platform provides the core layer one asset capabilities of transparent ledger accounting, fast and efficient settlement and high transactional throughput. Velo pairs Stellar together with every net smart contract capabilities to provide formula based transaction processing, custom asset staking, collateralization level calculation and other advanced features. Boy, those are big words, big words. But in essence, what this reminds me of is what Stellar is doing for Franklin Templeton Investments with their product. The transactions and the data, the information on who owns what and when and where, all of that is stored on the Stellar blockchain. What Velo is doing is applying their digital credit issuance uh, mechanism on Stellar. So if you know a little bit about Stellar, you know, that Stellar specializes in not only smart contracts and cross-border payments, but they also specialize in tokenization. And that's what this honestly gets us as close to as possible. Now, Velo has a patent out too for something that kind of takes us a bit off. We'll get to that a little bit later, but I wanna show you the value chain, how you can know for sure that money is gonna come into the Velo system and it's gonna stay there, which is going to make the token appreciating value. And that's what we all want, right? To issue a price stable credit in Velo protocol, <clears throat> the trusted partner must have Velo token available in their account. So they must be holding the token. In the testnet phase, you can get it on a faucet, but in order to go mainnet, Velo is obtainable via one of the following channels. Now, pay close attention to this diagram here. There are only three ways to get the Velo token to make use of its applications. You can either buy it from an exchange, you can borrow it from the foundation, or the foundation can grant you Velo tokens. All right. So when I was looking up the tokenomics for the Velo token, I had to go and do a lot of sleuthing. All right. Because it's not publicly listed, at least where I found. But what I was able to gather is that about 37% of all of the 30 billion tokens are held within the foundation, Velo Labs. They're holding that 37%, and that's going to go towards trusted partners, towards grants. So you have the remainder of that for the market. So that's a pretty decent split. That's almost a 60-40 split if you think about it. 40% staying with Velo, the other 60% going to the market. So, like I said, guys, I took a lot of time to dig into this project because I, I really think we found something here, okay? Again, they're running on Stellar. They're focused on a market that is fairly new but has a lot of traction and a lot of appeal to it because you're essentially opening up more ways for people to get more money their specific focus is the asian market right <clears throat> and they also have a very strong list of partners on their roster so let's start over here all right, CP Group backed Velo merges with Stellar Startup Interstellar in a nine-figure deal. We're going back to 2021 for this story. And this is very interesting because it's going to lead us up into who owns the Velo token. And that's what really interests me, okay? Velo Labs, cross-border settlement protocol backed by Thai conglomerate CP Group. Uh huh. Has merged with Interstellar, a payment startup that runs on the network. Interstellar was founded in 2018 as a Visa and City backed chain. It was acquired by Stellar startup Lightyear.io, which teamed up with two crypto entrepreneurs, Adam Ludwin and Jed McCaleb. The later now serves as the founder of Interstellar, and he's sitting on the board of Velo. Yep, Jeb is there. The firms did not disclose the nature of the terms of the merger, but people familiar with the deal told the block that Velo Labs effectively acquired Interstellar in a nine figure deal to accelerate its blockchain remittance network. Now, I still can't get this name right, so I don't want to disrespect this gentleman by butchering his name, 
but he's the owner of Fortune magazine and a son of the Thai billionaire from the Cher Ravavanant family. Again, I tried. That controls one of the world's largest conglomerates, Sharon Pophan Group, which will remain as the chairman of Velo Labs and Lightnet. Now, we're going to get to Lightnet in a second, but let me show you the team here. This brother right here, and he has an entire profile. The man comes from a royal family with royal blood and royal finances. So if that is who is backing this project, okay, and they've already locked in with Visa, Saba, which is a large development bank over in Asia, Stellar Lumens, hmm, okay, like these guys, their advisors, I remember his name, David Mazarus, he really was important during Stellar's work on central bank digital currencies. That's where I remember seeing his name from. Whenever you hear Stellar and CBDCs, you're probably going to run across David Mazarus. And to see him on Velo's team is very, very interesting. And then also we have an uh, economics professor from MIT. All right. Carnegie Mellon, University of Chicago. Like, yeah, they, they, they weren't playing <laughs> when they put this team together. So another thing that I'm pulling from this is the fact that this is almost like Stellar Lumens specifically concentrated in the Asian market. That's another advantage too. Let me show you this right here. Okay, we finished this story out. Yep. Oh, we got a little bit more here. So founded in 2019, Bella Labs initially incubated by the CP group in an effort to build a cross-border blockchain settlement network that is similar to the idea of Facebook Libra, but with a focus on the Southeast Asian market. Lightnet, the commercial entity behind the Velo protocol, raised $31 million in a Series A round in early 2020, backed by notable Asian institutions, including UOB Venture Management, Seven Bank, Hashkey Capital, Signum Capital, Duke Capital, and Hanwha Investment and Securities. A whole lot of money behind such a small project. And we were talking about Visa, right? Let's dive into that situation. So this occurred 2020, November. Bella Labs, Visa, and Lightnet Group, remember, that's the Stellar Connection, will work together on payment offerings targeted at serving the micro, small, and medium enterprises lending market in Asia. The collaboration seeks to let those who have substandard credit histories or no credit history get a line of credit by putting digital assets up as collateral. In a quote, the group CEO stated that bringing, uh, being new to credit or lacking credit worthiness is often an obstacle to achieving one's financial goals, such as securing loans to start a business or even buying a car. We are providing customers from the uh, MSME market with another pathway to build credit and improve financial wellness. So this reminds me a lot of what XGC is doing in trade finance by opening up more channels for people to get funding for some of these projects. All of this extra money really has me curious about the future state of the economy. Like everything seems to be crap now, but we're building out rails and channels for money to move rapidly all across the world. That's the pattern that I'm seeing here. So that's Velo's focus is those credit lines issuing new lines of credit to uh small businesses individuals maybe even small countries that's the scale that you're talking about there is whoever needs digital credit velo wants to position themselves right <clears throat> Some more facts here. International Finance Corporation forecast that 5.2 trillion in MSME lending goes unserved each year worldwide, while over half of that funding gap occurs in the Asian Pacific area. The agreement is a testament to, Velo's, to Velo Labs and its partners continuous effort to achieve financial inclusion for millions in the underserved lending market. Velo Labs says its aim is to build out a Velo protocol fueled Federated Credit Exchange Network. Federated Credit Exchange Network. Sounds a lot like Federated Member Banks. Hmm. Hmm. This is interesting. So again, are we looking at a meme coin? Really? Does not, does not seem like it. Now, we're going to check this profile here. Sh Taval Jaya 
Venon. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying. But I'll leave a link to this article. This really goes down through his entire story. Okay. His entire history. Just, just check this out. From 2003 to 2006. He served in the government sector as a director of government savings bank, a state-owned Thai bank, and is also a member of board of directors of the True Corporation Public Company, one of the largest companies listed on the stock exchange of Thailand. Wow. <laughs> Man, he is the chairman of both LightNet, a Singapore headquartered fintech company with the purpose of empowering underbank populations, uh, and SME Trade Finance with an inclusive international remittance ecosystem and Money Table, a leading fintech company whose vision is to be the largest digital HR platform and financial services brand in Asia. He is also a member of the advisory committee for Kajora Ventures, Southeast Asia Venture Capital Fund, and the founder of Inception Technology, a financial services provider. He also holds top executive positions in prominent public and private corporations such as Metro Machinery, Thai Kodama, Echo Auto Parts, and others. Man, <clears throat> this guy is legit. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. This, this, this guy is legit. And if he's backing the token, then you can, I feel safe anyway, you know, taking that risk. Now, let me show you this. And this is perhaps the most interesting thing I discovered when looking into Velo. This patent right here, wireless ultra low power portable lock. Now you're like, maybe you got this confused. No, no guys, same company, same logo, same link. All right. This lock may be realized as lock apparatus, including locking mechanism, having unlocked and locked states operable to provide physical resistance to being unlocked when in a lock state so this is a digital lock and just so you know that that article this is serious okay just so you know this is serious this is the actual patent document which they got this year they filed this this year so yeah they're focused on payments right and you can see velo lab san francisco california the inventors Okay, so now you have, you really have some interesting expansion here. I am very curious as to what this technology is going to be for. I am. And when I really thought about it, right? And I don't know why this just popped up, but check this out. So Amazon Go stores, what's the mechanism that you use to get in and out of there? You got to scan that little fingerprint joint, right? They also, in their white paper, and I'll show you that here. Where did it go? Oh, 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 there it is. In their white paper, they talk a lot about that conversion from web two to web three, right? And here's something that stood out to me. So diving deep into our Velo identity framework, which incorporates KYB and KYC anonymous interoperability chains is also present in this version of our light paper. And this is what I have highlighted here. Auto anonymous interoperability chain can be separated into three parts, namely KYB, KYC, KYB, KYC, KYB, anonymous and so forth and so on. All three have different processes and mechanisms that will give us expected outcome in the use cases that we will mention later in this paper. And one of those use cases include organic retail user acquisition and KYC onboarding for enterprise users. Our chain facilitates user acquisition drives by facilitating the current Web 2 traffic through to the Web 3 world. It is currently open for public users while whitelisted enterprises can deploy their services in our ecosystem. That to me sounds like a retail facing identity lock. And if we go back to the patent, it's exactly what this is for. So the reason why I bring up the Amazon Fresh Store example is because there is no cashiers there. And you have to scan, present a certain form of identification to get into that. That's just Amazon. So what if the goal is to proliferate that technology in other forms? And you can do it with blockchain. So 
I don't know. You guys tell me. You guys tell me. I think we've done enough digging into Bello. All right. Don't want this video to be too long. But my take, this ain't a meme coin. Not by any means. This is definitely a hidden gem. And it. Hmm. Let me scroll it. Scroll it. At this price point? Come on now. Come on now. You take some of this, put it in your Ethereum based or, you know, Stellar based wallet. Leave it. Don't even think about it. Because as the digital credit market evolves and advances, this is going to be the token that's going to be benefiting the most. So, with that being said, that's all I got for you, really. Velo token, definitely not a meme coin. So, if you found value, need you to hit that like button subscribe ring notification bell so that way you don't miss more content like this i love doing individual token reviews because i like to add that real life perspective these cryptos to me they're products they're going to be creating products that we're all going to use in real life so we have to approach them understand them and learn them the same way we would products that we shop for <laughs> you know christmas coming up but with that i'm out your ear again i'm wade teamer if that money is digital, so is the hustle. I'll see you in the next one.